in this video I'm going to explain you how to write the formula of compounds. So before we begin this, we must know uh, what are ions and its types, cations and anions, radicals, basic and acid, acidic radicals, valency, and finally writing chemical formula. It's basic and acidic, or you can call it as acid radicals. Also, these are you'll come to know. So let's look at what are ions. So when an atom loses or gains electrons, it becomes a charged particle called ions. So in our atomic structure, you have noticed the outermost orbit is also known as the valence electrons. So these electrons take part in the chemical bonding. So when the outermost orbit loses its electrons or gains its electron, it becomes a charged particle. And that particle is known as your ions. So ions are of two types, cations and anions. So this is a neutral atom. So when it loses electrons, it becomes cation. And when it gains electron, it becomes anion. So that's what I'm going to show you. So this is the structure for sodium. It has uh, 11 electrons to first orbit, 8 second uh, orbit, and finally one electron in the outermost orbit. Now here, if you look at the number of electrons is 11. So this time we write here E, 11. A number of protons will also be 11. That's what you must know. It's always 11. The number of electrons and protons will always be seen. The protons are present inside the nucleus. So it will be seen. Now if we look at the structure of this sodium, the number of electrons 11 and protons 11, since they do not have charge in them. So if you subtract 11 minus 11, it will be 0. So it is neutral. So now this sodium, the structure is neutral. It do not have a charged particle. That is known as your neutral. That's what is shown here, neutral atom. Now similarly, if you look at this chlorine, it's two electron in first orbit, second eight, and finally the balanced electron, that means the outermost electron, it will have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the number of electrons will be 17, as well as number of protons will also be 17. And if you subtract 17 minus 17, protons and electrons, it will be zero. So this does not have any charge in them. That's why it is known as your neutral atom. Now this chlorine requires one electron and this sodium has one extra electron because in octet rule, the outermost orbit must have eight electrons. So if it loses this electron, this electron, then this orbit will slowly disappear and this second orbit will have eight electrons. So now it is octet. So in order to be octet, either the element will transfer electrons or gain electrons. So now if we look at the chlorine, chlorine requires one electron. So this is also unstable. So it requires one electron to be eight because in the outermost orbit it has seven electrons. So once it receives, it gains electron, it will be eight, then it will be stable. Now, the sodium has extra electron here. So sodium, what is going to do is, sodium is going to transfer its electron to chlorine. So once it transfers the electron to chlorine, so I'm going to show you it with a red mark here. Now these electron of the sodium will be present in the outermost orbit of this chlorine. Now if you count the number of electrons, it will be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this chlorine is stable. It has eight electrons in its outermost orbit. Now after transferring the electrons, the sodium will also have eight electrons because they do not have electrons in the outermost orbit. Now this orbit will disappear. Now these two orbits, now let's look at the last orbit here, now it will have eight electrons, now this will be stable. So all the elements, they attain a stability, so they either lose electron or gain electron. Now here sodium is losing electrons, now let's look at the charge, what type of charge do they form? Now before it was 11 electrons here, now after losing one electron, losing one electron, the number of electrons present in sodium will only be 10. Now what is the charge here? The protons charge is more compared to the electrons before it was same, 11 and 11. So protons, one charge is extra. Look, it has 11, electrons are 10. Now it has one extra proton here. That's why the charge we always write as plus one proton is extra here. So what type of ions do we call here positive? So positive ions are known as your cat ions. So when it loses electrons, it forms positive ion known as your cat ions. Now let's look at chlorine. Now chlorine, it has 18 electrons now, 2, 8 and 8. So it has total number of electrons, 18 electrons, before it was only 17. So it has 
18 electrons. Now, how many protons are there? There are 17 protons. Protons are not going to vary. So, 18 electrons are there and 17 protons are there. So, one electron is extra here. That's where the charge, the chlorine, will get is minus 1. So, the sodium is plus, so it is plus 1. So, in this way, cations and anions are formed. Now, this is the difference between a neutral atom and an ion here. So, this is your Na plus and Cl minus. Now, this is the way how ions are formed. Now, next we are going to look at radicals. So, what are radicals? So, a radical is an atom or group of atoms of the same or different elements that behaves as a single unit with a positive or negative charge. The simple radicals means when it is an atom like sodium. So, sodium is simple. It's only one atom here with one charge here. As well as magnesium, it has two extra electrons in outermost orbit. So, after transferring it, losing its two electrons, it becomes positively charged. So, two cations. So, these are a simple radical. So, compound radical means when it is made up of group of two or more different atoms. It's known as your compound radicals. I'm going to show you the structure of sulfate ions. How are they formed? So, this is the compound radical of sulfur. The outermost orbit of sulfur has six electrons. Total number of electrons are 16. So only six electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now each oxygen atom will share its electron to be octet. But it lacks two electrons. That's why the charge is minus two here. So this is the structure of compound radical. So compound radical means group of atoms. Here we have sulfur and four oxygens here. One, two, three, four. So this is the structure of sulfate ions. Now we are going to look at the differences between basic radical and acid radical. So radical we have understood. Now let's look at this reaction potassium hydroxide known as uh, KOH or caustic potash. When it reacts with hydrochloric acid, this is the reaction rule for acid and base. So whenever acid and base react, it forms salt and water. So our salt is your potassium chloride and water. So this is the chemical reaction. Now here you can see this OH ion is forming a bond with this H ion here of acid and it is forming here water. Now the potassium radical has been contributed by the base. Now this potassium ion is contributed by the base. OH is a base. So this K ion will go to the, it will replace this hydrogen and will go to the, case, uh, to the chloride, chloride ion. This For this reason it is known as a basic radical. So a base is contributing the radical of this potassium, that's why it is called a basic radical. So, whereas a chloride ion, a chloride ion is being contributed by the acid HCl, hydrochloric acid. So, it is contributed by hydrochloric acid and is therefore termed as acid radicals. So this is the meaning of basic radical and acid radicals. Now, let's look at valency. So, what is valency? The number of electrons that an atom can lose, gain, or share during a chemical reaction is called is valency. So, I have, as I have shown you here in the previous picture here. Now, the, what is the valency of this sodium? So, always remember, valency, they do not have charge in them. Most of the students, they make a mistake of saying the valency is plus 1, minus 1 is wrong. So, valency, they do not have charge in them. So, what is the valency of sodium? So, sodium's valency is always 1. It means that sodium has one extra electron. It has transferred its electron. So, the valency that means the outermost orbit has one electron here. That's why we write here 1. So, what is the valency of chlorine? In the outermost orbit, the chlorine requires one electron, isn't it? So, for that reason, we say that the chlorine's valency is also one. It's not plus or minus. So, this is the meaning of valency. So, the electrons present in the outermost shell are also known as your valence electrons. So outermost orbit electrons are known as your valence electrons. The electrons present in the outermost orbit. This is known as a valence electron. So, I'm going to show you in the next slide here how to write the chemical formulas. So, before that, we must know the radicals, valencies. Okay. So we have here a list of basic radicals. So here they are all monovalent means when the valency is only one here. Divalent means with two valencies, that means two. Trivalent means with three. So these are all positive, that means. Look at let's look at ammonium. It has only one, so that's why it is written as only plus here. So gold is plus one. Silver only one. Copper 1, Hydrogen 1, Lithium 1. So these are the list which I have shown you here. Barium is 2, that means the outermost orbit. It has 2 extra electrons. 
So these are the list here. So we have your trivalent means three. So aluminium atom number is 30. So Ottoman orbit has three electrons. So after losing his electrons, it becomes positively charged. So three plus here. So these are known as your trivalent with three charges in them. Next we have list of acid radicals. Acid radicals, they are negative. So monovalent means one. Electronegative means negative charge in them. So this is acetate. Here we have bicarbonates. HCO3, this is your bicarbonate, okay. Bisulfide, also known as a hydrogen sulfide. So, here the list which I have shown you here. So, we are going to take the reference from here and we are going to write the chemical formula. The first, the simplest one which we are going to do will be write for potassium bromide. Now, how we are going to write the formula of potassium bromide? Now, let's look at the chart here. Now, potassium, it's K, right? It has charge of plus here, so 1. So, that's what we're going to do. So, we will just write potassium. And this charge is plus 1. So, we'll write here plus 1. Now, let's look at the bromide. Now, what is bromide? Bromide, it's out here. This is bromide. Bromide is Br minus. That means 1. Charge is also 1. So, we will write bromide with this charge minus 1. Now, what uh, the next step is, this one, what you need to do is just make an arrow out here and write this one. Don't write the charges, just write here one. And potassium also has plus one here, so write here one. Now, potassium has one out here, so we are just going to write only K. We are not going to write one, so bromine is only one here, so we are going to write here Br. This is the formula for potassium bromide. So, in this way, you can even do it for hydrogen iodide, hydrogen bromide by referring the chart. Now, next, what you are going to do is we are going to write a bit comp complicated. Now we are going to write here calcium chloride. Let's see. Calcium and chloride. So calcium is Ca2 plus 2 ions. Chloride. Chloride we have here with only one ion. So that's what we are going to do. So this is our uh, uh, ions with the calcium and chloride here. So as I have taught you, first step what you do is take this two out here and write below this chlorine. And this one, you write below this calcium. Okay, now we have Ca. Below Ca there is one, no need to write one here. Then we have chlorine, Ca. And below here is two, so we are going to write here two. So this is the formula for calcium chloride. And next we are going to make a little complicated. Ammonium sulfate. So ammonium is NH4 plus. And where do we have sulfate here? It's a divalent. So sulfate is here. SO4 minus 2. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to write for ammonium sulfate. Since ammonium is NH4, that's what we're going to do here. NH4. So I'm going to forward the copy here. Now this is our ions, ammonium sulfate here. Now next what I have taught you is the second step is you need to write this two below this ammonium. So we're going to write here two. And we are going to write here plus 1 out here. Now what do we have? We have here NH4, ammonium ions formula. And this 2. Now we cannot write here 2. If I write here 2, it looks like 42. So what we are going to do is, we are just going to put a bracket here. And write this 2 outside this bracket. Now we have sulfate. So we are going to write here SO4. It has only 1 here. So this is the formula for ammonium sulfate. Now, how are we going to write the formula for calcium bicarbonate? Let's see. Calcium bicarbonate. We know calcium is uh, Ca2 plus. Now, we are going to look at the formula for bisulfate. Bisulfate is also known as hydrogen and sulfate HSO4. Now, that's uh, the charge is uh, electrovalent here, so monovalent, so it's minus 1. So, that's what we are going to do here, minus 1. So, we'll write H. SO4 minus 1. Similarly, what you need to do here is just write your 1 below calcium and 2 below this bisulfate. The calcium is 1 here, so just write only CA here. And we have hydrogen sulfate or also known as your bisulfate, SO4. Now, just below this H, SO4, it's 2, so we are not going to write here 2. So, what we will do is we will put a bracket. And we write here 2. So this is the way how we have to write the formula. 
Now, if you have to make it a little more complicated, for example, zinc, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, sodium zincate. Now, how are we going to write the formula for sodium zincate? Now, let's look at sodium. Sodium is 1 here. It's not mentioned here. Okay, it's here in A plus 1. Now, zincate. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to find the zincate. It's here, zincate. ZnO2. This radical is divalent. So, 2. So, we are going to write for the formula for sodium zincate. For sodium zincate, first you need to write in A. Now, this 2, I'm going to write here, just below sodium. And this 1 of the sodium will go below this zincate. Now, sodium is 2. So, what you are going to do here is let's write here in A. Just below sodium is 2. So, we are going to write here 2. Then we have zincate. ZnO2. So it's 1. So there's no need to put a bracket and write 1 here. So this is the formula for sodium zincate.